So before I get into the logistics of, of systemic rewards, I just want to speak a little bit about how they fit into your program, how you can talk about them if you're looking to institute them with leaders, with senior leaders, with managers. We know that adding in more isn't always better. So how do you make rewards a piece of your system rather than just having it feel like it's adding complexity? And the way I tend to talk about this with leaders is I use a sports analogy. <laughs> um, so picture yourself at a sporting event, right? You're in the stands. What do you celebrate when you're there, right? When is it that you and your, and your fellow audience and, and um, you know, 12th man members are doing while you're in the stands? Are you celebrating when your team wins? 100%, right? Fingers crossed you get that opportunity to celebrate the W at the end of the game. Are you celebrating when they put points on the board, right? When they actually, for me, it's hard not to see this as a football example right now at this time of year. So when they're kicking the field goal, when they get that point after, when they um, get that touchdown, are you celebrating? Yes, absolutely. But as human beings watching a sporting event, we are not waiting for just those things. We are, we are celebrating any progress. We're celebrating a great defensive play. Did someone reach for the ball, not quite intercept it, but it was so close? Literally doesn't change the outcome of the game, but we're still celebrating that effort. And good thing too, because if we're not, it would be a really boring game to watch. Imagine sitting in the stands and the only time that you and your fellow patrons cheer is when there's points scored. Oh, soccer would be brutal. Even football would be painful. And then imagine being on the field in an environment like that where you're working really hard and the only time we're celebrating is every 10, 15 minutes of that game, of that one hour of playing time that you get each week. It would be a painful game to participate in if that's the case and no fun at all. So while that's not surprising why managers that are effective at managing their recognition culture know that you can't wait for the results. You can't wait for something tangible. You need to look for these day-to-day -day opportunities to cheer between the big wins. Now, that is the piece where we would see like the peer-to-peer -peer recognition, your progress, your day-to-day, -day, you're setting the standard, those things happening. You'd want that to happen and you'd want it to happen frequently. So then the rewards piece can be the thing that takes it up a notch when it comes to putting points on the board or winning or even winning the championship. Now you've got layers. The thing you do every day to drive home the message that they are valued, to keep them engaged and excited, but then you've got the bigger things that you can bring into play when you need to make the point that they've really gone above and beyond. They've done something really amazing. So when I'm talking to a leader, or I'm talking to someone who's looking to institute a new layer to their recognition, this is the analogy that I use. And this is how it might work for a particular organization, looking at what are the layers we're building into our recognition plan. So we um, often use this recognition pyramid with our clients to help them design what they're going to do. The way the pyramid works is at the bottom is the widest part, right? It's the foundation. So we tend to put the things that happen most frequently at the bottom. But then as we go up, we see less frequent, but usually much higher impact. So this is an example of a recognition pyramid I based off of one of our clients, where the base of their pyramid is that peer-to-peer -peer recognition. It's non-monetary. In this case, they're using e-cards through our engagement platform. So it's non-monetary. Anyone can send it to anyone else. They've got a couple dozen designs, so it can be really fun. And this is happening all the time. And managers can do it too, right? I get e-cards from managers and even senior leaders saying they've spotted something I've done. Then as we move up, we see the rock star rewards as an example. Happens less frequently. In this case, maybe managers have a budget that they can, that refills every quarter. It happens less frequently, but when it comes through, it's not only a story, but it's a little bit of a cash reward. And then up at the top, um, maybe it's annual values-based nominations. So who is delivering the best customer service on an annual basis? Would you like to nominate them? And then there's maybe even bigger prizes. So something I would have you consider as you look to add rewards or look to evaluate your whole program is what do you already have? What is most frequent? 
And what different ways do you have to add impact and higher levels in?